Hi, I'm Mike Greeley and welcome to Power Boat Television. This week on the show, it's been kind of special. We've been sort of doing that planes, trains, and automobile, but in this case, it's been planes and boats from Ontario to the beautiful sunshine coast of British Columbia. So stay with us as we tour this popular cruising ground. We had just driven into Back Eddy Marina in Egmont, direct from Vancouver International, to locate our charter boat from Nanaimo Yacht Charters. Tucked away on the approach to the Skookumchuck Narrows, the marina was an ideal jumping off point for our cruise to Princess Louise Inlet and the Marine Park. I spotted our boat on the main dock and headed down there to meet Al Brown, our host for the next few days. You must be Al. I am. Mike Ridley, Al, pleasure. My, nice to meet you, Mike. Thank you very much for uh, bringing your boat over and hosting us here. Uh, I guess we're all set to go. We are. We got a beautiful day and we got a we great do. journey ahead of us and we you're going to see Lots of fantastic stuff. Looking for great stuff. Can I give you a yeah, hand Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. What's easy? Put back here. Yeah. After getting our gear aboard, I helped Al with the lines, and we were underway. <music> Departing at low tide, according to Al, was going to be to our benefit. So we're going right into a flood, which is really good. So you say that this is on a flood tide, so it's bringing water inland, and we've got a, a spot we have to go through that we have to time it to slack tide? Yes, uh, going into uh, Princess Louise Inland, there's a place called Malibu Rapids, and it's very rocky, very narrow, and we want to hit that right at slack, which is about right. 517 today. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll leave the timing to you. Okay, perfect. It's your waters. Yes. All right. Within minutes of departing the marina, while crossing the last stretch of Jervis Inlet, the panorama of the Pacific Coast Mountains was all around us. We could not have found better weather for a few days on the Sunshine Coast. The water was flat, the skies clear, and the temperature was comfortable. Well, Mike, I'm going to let you take over. I don't, I don't know if you can handle this or not. It's a we'll big job, out. okay? <laughs> yeah, we're so You'll have gray hair when speed. you're done. Uh, yes, like yours? <laughs> yeah, like mine. <laughs> okay. As we progressed up the inlet towards Prince of Wales Reach, the foothills on either side showed signs of selective logging over the years and a still active quarry, some of the only signs of man's impact in the area. With light winds and a crystal clear blue sky, the waters took on a beautiful hue and reflected the landscape all along the shoreline. On occasion, other boats would overtake us with our slow pace of eight knots. With the balance of the afternoon to reach our destination for the night, we were in no hurry. All we had to do was sit back, relax, and take in our surroundings. Along the stretch is one of the few bays you can pull a boat into, Vancouver Harbor. While there is some commercial activity here, you can move to a quiet corner and anchor. Our detour is driven by the desire to spot a bear along the shore but we had no luck. Exiting Vancouver Harbor and tracking water depth illustrated the changing topography under the water. Suddenly the depth on the sonar passed 1,000 feet and then it steadied between 8 and 900 feet. From Vancouver Harbor we had only a short distance to cruise before reaching Princess Louisa Inlet so I settled in to soak up more of the Sunshine Coast stellar scenery. Join us later in the show as we make our way towards Princess Louisa Inlet. Hi, welcome back to the show. Well, we're just arriving outside of Princess Louisa Inlet here. And as you remember what Al and I were talking about earlier in the show, he mentioned that you have to go through the Malibu Rapids here. So we've been waiting and timing the trip up to arrive here as it heads towards slack tide, because at the peak, the current going through the Malibu Rapids here is nine knots, so you have to wait for that to calm down to make your passage. The closer we got to Malibu, the more impressive this part of the Pacific mountain range became, with some peaks soaring to 2,400 meters above us. The snow-capped peaks continued to feed streams and waterfalls even in mid-September. 
So on our way in, on the, on the left side, you're going to see a building. It was built uh, in 1945 for Hollywood people to come and vacation at. And since then, it's gone through a few owners. And today is uh, a camp for young people to come to. And it's absolutely beautiful. As we headed towards the entrance to the inlet, your window for passage may vary depending on the type of vessel and its ability to handle currents. So Mike, we're just gonna head into the rapids now and uh, we wanna stay in the blue zone. Mm -hmm. However, there's one uh, rock awash on the right hand right. side. Okay, so you wanna stay that. to the left of that. And other than that, just stay in the blue and we'll go right through and before you know it, we'll be in 300 feet of water again. We had arrived early, but after observing the flow past the island, it was determined that we could motor through given the meridian size and power from twin diesels. Within minutes, we were through and cruising up the calmer waters of Princess Louisa Inlet. And just past Malibu Narrows, kids at the camp were having a blast in the September sun. All we had to do was sit back, relax, and enjoy the cruise up the inlet into Princess Louisa Marine Park. Looking up the mountainsides, you can see the path through the trees where some of the spring runoff cascades down 13 waterfalls to the inlet. Rounding the last turn to the end of the inlet, Chatterbox Falls revealed itself, sparkling in the afternoon sun. While it may have been September, the number of boats on the park dock reflect just how popular Chatterbox Falls are even at this time of year. Secured for the day, we were glad to be stepping ashore to explore the park and get up close and personal with the falls. I was pleased to read that not only was Princess Louisa Inlet a provincial marine park, but in 2002, the Nature Conservancy had joined with the Princess Louisa Inlet Association to protect additional lands around the park. Walking the pathways, I quickly realized I was deep into a west coast rainforest. On shore, one can find a shelter with picnic tables and a fire pit and campsites for kayakers and visitors arriving in small craft. But it's really all about the falls. Here we are at the top of Princess Louisa Inlet at the spectacular Chatterbox Falls. So it's been a wonderful experience. Now, if you consider yourself a cruiser that needs to explore or a brand new boater, take a course and study about bear boat chartering. Come to BC to the Sunshine Coast, bear boat charter a craft anywhere along the coast and come exploring. You will not regret it. As the late day sun passed behind the mountains, it was our time to sit back looking out over the inlet and marvel at the wilderness so readily accessible by boat. Hi, I'm Mike Ridley and welcome to Power Boat Television. Well, it's early in the morning here at Princess Louisa Inlet at the Marine Park, just right at Chatterbox Falls. Just waiting for the sun to come over the mountains here, which are quite tall, and then we're gonna get set to resume our cruise on BC's Sunshine Coast. But before departing, I had to take one last walk ashore to lock in my memory the sights and sounds of this special place. The sound of Chatterbox Falls and the sun burning off the mist as it rose to light up the mountainside was worth waiting for in the cool morning air. As the sun started to touch the waters of Princess Louisa Inlet, it was time to retrace our route out to Queen's Reach and to Prince of Wales Reach. Approaching Malibu Rapids, we had some company alongside for a while. Passing through the rapids at low slack tide, the flow was minimal, calm, and we barely felt the boat shift in the current. With only a gentle breeze, the waters were calm, so this would be a very relaxing cruise and one to be savored. Interesting, this shoreline all along here, you're saying it's a great area for diving. I didn't know the diving was so popular here. The diving industry here is huge. Uh, 
there's lots of classes that can be taken, weekend courses, so on. But the diving along here, this water here, I think is about, you said about 900 feet deep. Yeah, it's coming up at ranging between 800 and we're 1156 feet right now. Right, right now. so where we would dive is along the wall uh, on this channel here. It would go, to, you'd, the max you can go is about 150 feet. But in that 150 feet to the surface, you're gonna find sea urchins, uh, octopus, wolf eels, sea anemones, plumose anemones, uh, rockfish, all kinds of life lives within that first 60, 70, right. 80 feet. Right. It also allowed Al and I to talk more about the area and his experiences here. I first started when I started diving and uh, a buddy of mine lived out in Victoria and told me to get my diving certificate and go diving with him. So both my wife and I did that and that went on until I became a master instructor and then I decided we'd better have our own boat to get around. So that was about 14 years ago, 15 years ago. So that's when the boat so started. I didn't grow up with it, being a prairie boy from Medicine Hat. <laughs> Long way to any big water. Yeah. So if you can take a guy from Medicine Hat and put him on a boat and him learn, anybody can do it. <laughs> For the next few hours, we just had to sit back and relax. As we approached Egmont Point, where we departed from, we passed inside of Miller Island to take a look at the sea lions basking in the sun. Passing Seashell Point, we continued into Agamemnon Channel, bound for Pender Harbor. Along this channel, you will pass by Earls Cove Seashell BC Ferry Terminal, serving Powell River. The channel is a wide open scenic passage of approximately 10 nautical miles to the approach into Pender Harbor. In this area of deep waters, anchorages are scarce, but Green Bay offers cruisers a great spot to tuck back into and spend some time at anchor. As you approach the end of the channel, you can clearly spot Pearson Island. Join us later in the show as we wrap up our cruise on BC's Sunshine Coast. Welcome back. We left off just as we were arriving in Pender Harbor. As you round the point and cross the entrance to Lee Bay, you will notice the rapid appearance of homes on the shoreline. Pender Harbor is not only the water and town, it is the area name that encompasses the communities of Middle Point, Madeira Park, Francis Peninsula, Kleindale, Garden Bay, Irving's Landing, and Daniel Point. The area has multiple marinas serving every size and type of boat found on the coast. Our choice of dockage was Madeira Marina Park Harbor itself. On arrival, we made quick work of securing the meridian before setting out in the rib to explore. Pender Harbor with its sheltered waters, back bays and islands is truly a boater's paradise. Being connected to Vancouver by road and ferry crossing makes the area quite accessible and popular a destination in its own right, as well as the jumping off point for exploring the Sunshine Coast. We're going into Gunboat Bay, which is a very narrow entrance and really should only be done in a big boat during a high tide. Yeah, I was looking at the, uh, the charts earlier and there's not much water there. No, not a lot. So this is the entrance to Gunboat Bay. And if you love seafood, this is the place to come. You can start with some fresh oysters and pass on the starfish. But after chasing a few fish in the shallows of Oyster Bay, we decided that was it for touring. Pender Harbor is known as a real hot spot for diving and fishing, and with the balance of the afternoon ahead, it was time to fish. First stop back to our boat for the fishing gear loaded on by Nanaimo yacht charters. Heck, they even equipped us with crab traps. And with the aid of the internet, I had a fishing license and we were ready to go. As we approached the rock islands where we would be fishing for lingcod, we were able to witness several families of eagles engaged in training their young ones. And of course, more sea lions. You can hand me that. This is uh, not your typical fishing, fishing vessel. 
you know, it's a little, uh, little tight, but guess what? The fish don't care. Amazing how, how deep it is right offshore. We're, we're, that's about, um, I would guess, 50 feet. So you let it go right to the bottom again? Yeah, or? yeah, you want to bounce her off the bottom. Finally, while these guys looked on, Al got the catch of the day. Little tagger rockfish. Just hooked him as he was going by by the looks of it. Oh, he probably, he probably took a strike at the hook, right? Right. That's what I got. Hey, that's a great fish. <laughs> yeah. I relocating kelp. some Yeah, relocating some kelp roots and all. While we didn't have a great day fishing, I enjoyed the cruise with Al into some of the most spectacular locations for boating that I have ever been. Want to come to BC and the Sunshine Coast? Check out Boating BC and Ahoy BC online and start making plans. Personally sad to say that this is the end of our time on a small portion of BC's Sunshine Coast. We spent some time cruising through here in Pender Harbor and doing some local exploring. Now it's time to call it a day. If you do have the opportunity to come to British Columbia, whether it's from across Canada or from somewhere in the United States, if you can't cruise into this location, you can certainly come here as we have in Bear Boat Charter. You'll relish the experience and you will find no place like it anywhere else on earth.